And uh, I think, in answer to your question, I think my wife and I share some political and, and ideological viewpoints and some religious viewpoints. We're both Christians. We both attend uh, and are members of First United Methodist Church and, and feel very strong about our uh, attendance there. Um, but I also believe that, that we're different in ways. I'll give you an example. My wife and the rest of the council believed that we should move our city hall to the Bank of America building. That was uh, going to be a project in excess of $4 million. And while I strongly support downtown and believe that it's a good uh, thing to support our downtown, I also believe that we have to be very capable uh, fiscal managers right now. And I'm not certain that it's fair for us as a council to ask people to pinch pennies and tighten their belts when we're involved in a $4 million project to uh, move our city hall. Um, frankly, and, and I've had a lot of people address this issue with me. A lot of people have said to me, boy, we need to be you know, building infrastructure for growth and what have you. I think we need to be the best small town we can be, and I think we need to, uh, right now, um, I'll give you an example. Mr. Ro Mr. Robert Jacks came and addressed council months and months ago. And uh, Robert said, uh, this is before I ever knew him, and he said, um, he said, you know, when I start my budget at the beginning of each year, I have X amount of money, and I have to make sure that when I get to the end of the year, I haven't exceeded that budget, or I can't, you know, I can't afford to, to make it. In other words, I'll run out of money. And he said, I, I wish that government could start operating that way. And his point really resonated with me because for so long, you know, I've been visiting with people and hearing them and them saying, you know, that they're on tight budgets and fixed incomes. And uh, yet at council, I would very rarely, if ever, hear the council members talk about the interests of the taxpayers. And so when Mr. Jacks came and addressed them, the point really resonated and that was kind of about the last we heard of it. I kind of thought at that point, well, maybe now we'll start to hear the taxpayers' interest represented, and I just didn't hear that very much. So I think instead of trying to build more water and wastewater infrastructure for growth right now, why don't we try to move some of the, consi some of the considerable inventory of lots that we currently have, and that way I think we can be better managers of our, of our city's budget. So when it comes to City Hall and a possible new location, mm -hmm. is that something that you think needs to be pursued at all, or was it that particular Bank of America choice? Yeah. Um, I, I believe that uh, I believe there are needs for a new city hall. I don't think anybody could go and do a thorough inventory of our city hall and say that it's particularly adequate. There are needs. But I think those needs have to be balanced with what is going to be the effect on our budget. We have $2.1 million that's been allocated through a bond for use for infrastructure. And part of that infrastructure is considered to be use of a new city hall. It was originally, I think, part of about a $7 million bond package. And um, uh, so, so there is that money available. And... Um, but, you know, when you combine that, I've, I've heard a number of people say, and I, I'm, I'm, I would really like to look more closely into this issue. I've had a number of people tell me we could take property that's not already on the city tax rolls and build a new facility and do so at considerably less expense, maybe more in the three million rather than the four plus million dollar range and have a very adequate and new city hall as opposed to this project without taking the Bank of America project off the city tax roll. And so that's, that's one thing that I've heard people say. Now, whether or not all that's accurate, sometimes we all know that when you actually get down to doing a project, it can be very, you know, it can be different from the numbers that you hear tossed around. But uh, in answer to your question, I think we could use a new city hall, but I think we need to do it at a time when we can uh, afford it, and I think we need to look closely at how we spend those tax dollars. Uh, here, here's, here's an important point to make. We did three different studies of, uh, the City Council did three different studies of uh, moving the City Hall. They did a study at the Guy Griggs building, at, at the Windstream building, that was $33,000 was paid for that, about $20,000 at, at Guy Griggs, and about $20,000 at Bank of America. So that's $73,000 of taxpayer money that went into feasibility studies that we wound up not doing anything about. 
I was talking with one lady about that concept on the, on the campaign trail and she said, our city council is very good and she kind of went like this and kicked her foot out and she said, it kicking the can down the road. And I thought that was an apt description of what we do. And um, while feasibility studies can be in, important and while they should be done by competent people, I think at some point you've got to squ quit spinning your wheels and make a decision. And, um, you know, three different studies for that. We also studied the um, Arcadia building. I think that was another uh, $20,000 and, and wound up um, uh, leasing it to uh, Haji for um, a, a certain amount of money. And then he made an agreement that he would, uh, within a certain amount of time, make, uh, you know, make improvements to the building. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's just quite a bit of taxpayer money, I think, that we've spent on, on studies without really accomplishing very much. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you one other thing about that. I visited with a retired professional engineer in West Kerrville, and he told me, he said, you know, he said, I could have done that uh, feasibility study on the Windstream building for $2,000 and would be, have been happy to donate my time and services to that. And I think that's an important point, that we have a very capable citizenry in Kerrville, and a lot of them would like to be much more actively involved locally if they could. And I think we need to start taking advantage of that instead of farming out all of our uh, feasibility studies to high-paid consultants. I just don't think that's a good use of taxpayer money. Why don't you talk a little bit about economic development and how you see the role of the city council working with the uh, Economic Development Corporation? Yeah, um, and of course that's been a, quite an issue for quite some time now. Um, I do think it's a good thing that we reorganized KEDF. I think that was a step in the right direction. I think everybody agrees that a 40-member board was unwieldy and that uh, the nine members can serve much better. I disagree with Mr. Gross. He would like to make the, the board a five-member board, and I think that's too small. I think somewhere in the nine to 15-member range is probably a, a good number because it actively engages different members of the community. Uh, you guys probably know that we have a couple of members from business on that board and uh, the CVB and uh, KISD is on there and uh, council has a representative, the county has a representative. We have a number of different uh, members of the community, all of whom are actively engaged and concerned about our community who serve on that board. And I think that's a good thing. I think that's a step in the right direction. Uh, a question is whether it's going whether and how it's going to be funded because it depends on the Economic Improvement Corporation for funding. My belief is, and, and I, I, I'll base this on a conversation I recently had with a state senator. I went to school in, in Tyler growing up with a young man named Kevin Eltyf, and he became a city council member in Tyler about 13 years ago, and he became um, uh, the mayor of Tyler about six years after that. And I was urged by one of our constituents here to uh, call him and talk to him because Tyler had reduced their tax rate from 52 cents per hundred dollars valuation down to 20 cents. And uh, I was interested to find out how they'd done that because I think, I think part of listening and analyzing and thinking outside the box is talking with people in other communities and finding out what's worked for you and how has it worked. So I called Kevin and he told me that um, he had um, been very successful in implementing the policy of changing the uh, EIC situation in Tyler uh, from a uh, uh, 4B sales tax situation where they had an EIC board to management of those funds, which by the way are about $2.5 million annually here in Kerrville, uh, management of those funds to, a, uh, to the city council.